this is a dead person. I assume a lot of you don't want to be this. So today I'm here to talk to you about a couple things you can do better with your swimming technique so you won't drown. And the reason why I'm doing this is I've been swimming for 10 years and in my time I've seen a lot of kids, and I've seen a lot of kids almost drown in the pool. And it's kind of sad to be honest. And I don't want any of you to be like that. And the three things I'm going to be talking about today are how to form your hands better to grip the water. I know it's, it sounds weird, but whatever. How to get your head down so you don't drag in the water. And how to kick better so your stroke isn't a slump. And I will be using my test dummy Silas today. He's so first off with your hands. So your hands are an important key part when you swim. They help you grip the water. They help you propel yourself through the water. And this is horrible for me. The first step in getting proper technique with your hands is to put your fingers together to get maximum area of water. Second part is to cup them together <laughs> so you can basically scoop the water with your hands as you go. And the third part is to get your arms out as far away from your body as possible so when you take the scoop of water, you grab as much as possible. It's like a giant ice cream scoop, but chlorine filled. Nasty. <laughs> that you don't want to have at all. And so, with your arms, that's halfway through the stroke, but it's not the key part. The key part is your breathing. I mean, we all need oxygen to live, I guess. I don't know. So, uh, but with a lot of strokes, when people are starting out, they like to do the Tarzan stroke where they keep their head up, which is horrible on structure and form in your body. As I was to so basically when you have your head up, your body's kind of at a slant in the water, and no matter how hard you kick, you're gonna still be dragging in the water because your body is kind of up and out of the water. <laughs> See, just like that's perfect. Anyways, so what we swimmers do is we keep our head down and we breathe like this. And just every other stroke or every stroke, if you guys are weak lunged. <clears throat> but and so you combine that with the arm technique and you get a good stroke going. But last of all, most importantly, except for me, this kick sucks. There. Is you need to have a strong kick. You may have the best arms in the world, and you may have the best lungs in the world, but you're not really going anywhere if you don't have good kick. And what a good kick does is you keep your stroke together, helps your arm take a load off your arm so you're not really wasting all your energy with your stroke. And I hope those are some weird socks, but all right. <laughs> It helps just tie your whole stroke together so it doesn't look sloppy. Now a lot of people when they kick, it's not really uniform, it's big and sloppy like this. No. What happens when you use a big sloppy stroke is you're wasting all your energy, which can be used to help take uh, pressure off your arms so you're not dragging in the water. And that's when a lot of people get into that danger zone and they start taking on water and drowning. So what you need to do is you need to do small, quick, repetitive kicks with timing in your arms and breathing. I don't know if I can do that here. Well, you can try. And so, if <laughs> you get that cycle down, you start getting into a rhythm where you are going at a steady pace and you get as much distance as possible with as little energy used. And so, if you combine the three things I showed you today, arms, thank you, breathing, and small, quick, and effective kicks, you will save as much energy as possible in the water and probably not die. Thank you. <laughs> 